بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope and pray that you all are doing well and you and your families are staying safe and healthy inshallah My name is Musira and I will be serving as your moderator for this hour I'm a young Muslims member from Alexandria Virginia and excited for you all to join us for this fascinating session. For those who might not know, Young Muslims is a division of ICNA and we're a national youth organization with chapters across the nation that create a safe and supporting Islamic environment for the youth where we stay connected to one another, participate in community service activities, and strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of our members also work together and hold our annual Young Muslims Conference in conjunction with the ICNA Convention every year, which would have happened this weekend, but subhanAllah, due to the pandemic, we weren't able to physically meet at the DC Convention Center. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners and has still allowed us to gather together and take in the knowledge and practical tips provided to us by our Islamic teachers and Muslim professionals who graciously took time out of their schedules to be with us these past two days. So, so we ask we Allah can move to and accept and them and invite them to and up on the screen as well. So we can take a couple of questions from our audience. Sister Linda, I've got you. Sister Samara, how's Mike? Yes, I am here. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. Sister Linda, you good? I'm good. I'm so good too. Okay, good. <laughs> Good, Abdullah. Okay, so with that, inshallah, um, I do have a couple of questions. We can start with Sister Sumera. Um, we do have a couple of people in the audience I would like to ask, um, I guess, like some tips on how we can become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strong within our deen. Um, because as you know, our mood changes day by day uh, because of the self isolation and quarantine is put forth. So uh, what are some uh, tips and advice that you have for um, our viewers that are listening? JazakAllah khair. And again, it's a very great question, but at the same time, it's a very, um, very awfully asked question. So my first tip for everyone, including myself, is dua, dua, and dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in the Quran, that means uh, the ayah is, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ الدَّعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ So that means the, the translation of the ayah is, when my servants ask you about me, tell them that I am closer to them. So that means it is a common response that the believers or the or, or, or the humans, they will turn to their Lord. So in these times, especially no matter you are uh, locked down or your, your mood is low, but ask dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second is shukr. Develop the attitude of gratitude. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala th says in the Quran, la rabbukum la in shakartum. The, the translation is when you be grateful to your Lord, he will increase you or he will give you more. So subhanAllah, if we be grateful, regardless what the situations are or whatever challenges and crises we are facing, but inshallah, just two very simple tips. Jazakallah khair, inshallah. I mean, uh, Sister Zahra, Sister Linda, would you like to add anything? I think something that I've been working on is just for everything that I didn't think I had time for in in my day-to-day -day life, I no longer, like I'm, we're all really busy. I, I, most people will tell you that if they're in this work, their workload has increased, right? But there's like time savings that have still happened. I'm not commuting to work anymore, right? Like getting dressed is a lot easier when, when we're at home. And so all of the things I said I didn't have time for, I am now thinking about how I make time for, right? So yesterday that meant, oh, like, a lot of times lunch is rushed at work. I don't have time to read Surah Kahf, right? Okay, so now I need to do that. Oh, like I stay up late because I'm in meetings and then Fajr is hard to pray on time. Now I'm practicing that, right? Praying on time, reading Quran every day. Like this is this is really a moment for, for us to say, I didn't have time before, but I have these new pockets of time. I should be praying on time because I don't have to step away from, step away from my table to go to my living room to pray, right? But all these things, I think we can be doing right now and that's my like for me personally that's my goal like my goal and my hope is that i emerge from this with new practices that i was not even new but neglected practices renewed i just wanted to add and that um, actually sorry, go ahead. sorry i just wanted to add and and uh, everything that sister sumaira said to sister zahra said but i also want to say to folks like be realistic 
it's okay to be sad sometimes. It's okay to feel like bored and frustrated. It's okay to feel even angry um, because you're not able to do the things that you normally were able to do. So you be having these nor these emotions are normal emotions. And of course that may give you an opportunity to find ways uh, to connect with others and still be in community. What's really making a lot of people sad is being far away from people that they love being around. And so for me, if you feel lonely, um, I personally have opened all my DMs, my Instagram DMs open, my Twitter DMs are open, my Facebook DMs are open, reach out. Um, that the, a lot of the sadness that we're having in this moment is just really not being able to be in community with one another. So our faith is part of that. But in order sometimes to make our faith complete, we want to have people to encourage us and people to reach out to and people to say, I'm with you, I'm here with you, and we're going to get through this together. You're oh, absolutely right. right. Everyone's just text away or FaceTime or Google Hangout away. This also just reminds me of something that I, I want to add in. A really great resource for people right now is Khalil Center. Right, is that um, sometimes the, the sadness and the loneliness is routine, can be resolved through checking in with family and friends, but sometimes it's more. And so the Khalil Center provides culturally competent, religiously competent therapy services. They're available, they've increased their services in this moment. And so for attendees that are, you know, the depression sticks and I, I need to talk to a professional, like that is okay, that is acceptable. A lot of people do it, reach out to the Khalil Center. Sounds like a good plan, inshallah. Um, just a reminder for our viewers, um, please make sure that we are praying a respective fertsala. Um, either it's um, um, the Hurrasar um, around this time. So please make sure that uh, we are following up on that, especially with the reminder that Sister Zahra gave. Um, we can segue into our next question. Um, some viewers are asking, what are some ways to be more active um, from home with regards to the 2020 election? Um, and I guess, what are some best methods to raise awareness? So I'll give that to Sister Linda. I appreciate that because that's like my whole work, my whole life. Um, if you're not registered to vote, as I said earlier, like folks, come on. I don't know what else and what more I would, you know, I never ask Muslims to do anything that I myself am not doing. I would never guide you in a direction that I believe is uh, the wrong direction for our community. I want us to be the best community, the most protected community. I want us to be able to thrive in this country. And right now we have already seen just okay. in the last few years the horrifying impacts of this administration in our communities. And so I hope that we can all agree together um, that we are going to continue to build power. So what do you do if you're not registered to vote, vote, register, excuse me. And many, in many states, majority of states now, you can um, register online. Some states will require that you print out a form and then just put it in an envelope and mail it to your local board of elections. The post office is still open. The little mailboxes in your community just put a little stamp on it and put it in the mailbox. Uh, remind your family members. I mean, look, we're all connected folks. Like pick up the phone, call your auntie, your uncle, your brother, your cousin, get into the WhatsApp groups that you're part of and remind people that it's their civic duty and not just their civic duty, but it is our responsibility to the most marginalized and harmed people in this country. And the last thing that I'll say as we get into November and we're going to the polls to vote in hopes that we remove this administration from office, I want you to remember that this election is not about your personal feelings. It's not about electing someone who's so masha Allah, the best president that ever happened. We don't have any wonderful candidates right now. We just don't. The bottom line is we are in an unfortunate situation. But when you do go to the polls, I want you to remem remember to vote for the little babies that are in cages at the border right now who are going to maybe never be reunited with their families. I want you to vote for every Yemeni, Somali family, for every Syrian family, for every Libyan family, for every family, Iranian family who's been separated from their loved ones because of this administration. I want you to remember the people in this country that don't have health care, that are dying because they don't have health care. I want you to, to vote for the people who are going to be even more broken than they were before this administration came to office. So what I'm asking our Muslim American community to do is a collective vote, a solidarity vote, and to put our own personal feelings to the side just for a second and remember the people that are less fortunate than us. And then to commit after the 2020 election to organize. So when Sister Linda tells you, I need you in the street, I need you to email your member of Congress, I need you to send a letter to the White House, I need you to call the White House, I need you to organize, then I need you to do that. I need you to hold, whether it's Joe Biden in the White House, whether it's Andrew Cuomo in the White House, whether it's Donald Trump in the White House, I need our Muslim American community to use their voices. This is our country. 
this government works for us. They work for me. They work for you. We got to make sure that that we we allow them to 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 or build the political will for them to say, "Wow, I got to do the right thing because these people out here are forcing me to do the right thing. They're pushing me to do the right thing." And so, the more voices we have asking our government to be righteous, I believe wholeheartedly that our government will be on a more righteous path if millions of righteous people are calling them to that path. Absolutely. Um, and we'll take one final question for Sister Zahra. You did mention how um, there are more cases of COVID-19 among African Americans. So when Vera was asking if that's due to historical racism or if you think it's racism in the pre present um, healthcare system. I would say that it's both, right? So we know that communities of color have lesser access to healthcare, lesser access to resources, um, and by the way, also live in sometimes places that are food deserts, right? So they're going there. It's difficult for them to even shelter in place. And so it's both historical um, as well as as current. And so, you know, people keep saying COVID-19 doesn't discriminate. And it's, you're right, it doesn't. But U.S. systems, the U.S. systems do. Okay, inshallah, jazakallahu khair. I did, thank you so much for your time. And all of the viewers have been making tons of dua for you ladies. Um, I think Sister Samara, you um, you had uh, an announcement to make, so we'll give you the floor to be able to do that. Uh, but ladies, please stay on as we, because uh, I, I still want to continue making dua for you all, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, um, Sarah. Um, so I wanted to make an uh, announcement about um, Ikna Sisters program and um, as some viewers and some audience, they were asking, what should they do? So SubhanAllah, the blessed month of Ramadan is coming up and Ikna sisters have put up a very beautiful program where uh, they can daily receive Quranic reminders right into their um, WhatsApp uh, account or to their Facebook accounts. And flyer is on the screen. You can sign up for daily Quranic reminders at ikna.eng dot outreach at gmail.com and subhanallah it's a great opportunity for all of us to uh to connect to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his beloved word every single day jazakallah khair um, and I just wanted to give you, Sister Sumera, Sister Linda, and Sister Zahra, the opportunity to say any last few words to our viewers before we end with announcements and dua. So I will go first. <laughs> So um, again, I would like to remind on my three points, remember togetherness. We are together as an ummah. Number second point, positive communication, not only within the family, but within our communities. Obviously, it will bring positivity to our society. And my last, last point was kindness and respect in action and speech with everyone at every occasion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to, to reflect and to act upon it. Jazakallah khair. I'm going to go next because I think, I think Linda is going to be a really great way to close. Um, so I, I did want to just really quickly add to the question about why we're seeing racial disparities in COVID-19, right? So some of it is access to health care. Uh, some of it is also the jobs that people hold. And so because there has been long-term discrimination in job seeking, in education and job seeking, a lot of people of color have jobs that can't be done from home. So the ability to, to work from home is an incredible privilege that low wage workers don't have. There's a reason someone has to go into Whole Foods and so that the rest of us who work from home can buy toilet paper and can buy the groceries that are organic that we want, right? And so unfortunately we see racial disparity happening along those lines. We also see that communities of color and low income communities oftentimes live in more cramped spaces, in smaller homes, right? In neighborhoods where everything is so closely packed together that social distancing is really, really hard. And so it's not just health disparities that are leading to the increased issues now. It's disparities along so many issues, right? And of course, by the way, if we were to look at incarceration in the United States, we know that black and brown communities are incarcerated disproportionately. They're over-criminalized, over-policed, and over-incarcerated. And so we're going to unfortunately continue to see uh, a very high number of black and brown people disproportionate to their population percentages being impacted by COVID. So I want to add to the initial question, but in closing, you know, the, the push for me where, where I'm at is that this is really hard, 
right? I've got good days and bad days. I'm thinking about how I manage my staff, but also how I manage my own work. Someone said the other day, we're not working from home. We are at home in a crisis trying to work, right? I've, I've met with my therapist. I've been sick. Like I've done the, the full range of like all the things that could be hard. And I'm still incredibly lucky right now. Right? because I am healthy, because I do have a home, because I have money to donate, I know where my next meals are coming from. And I have time to worship. I have time to worship. I have the conscience to worship. And so my hope for myself, but also for all of us going through this right now, is that we can look back and say, this was a test, but we emerged from it successful. Allah has given each of us custom-built tests. People with families are struggling with living with their families, people living alone. Oh my God, I'm so bored, right? People with health are saying, why can't I go out? Why can't I travel? And it's because we have to stay put so that we don't make other people sick. People who are sick are struggling with just that, with being sick. And so my hope is that we can recognize that Allah is testing each of us together, but also very uniquely. And this is an opportunity for us to get to know ourselves, for us to get closer to our creator, and for us to do more, to really, really dig deep at a time when it's actually hard, when it's actually challenging, when it's not easy to give away $50 because I don't know what will happen to my job in two weeks. It's not easy to volunteer because I'm afraid for my health. It's not easy to speak out because everybody wants to make racist jokes. This is a time when we are being tested and inshallah, we will pass with flying colors. Thank you again. Um, thank you, Sister Zahra and Sister Samira. Thank you so much, Amosira, for moderating. And thank you for Ikna for having us. Um, for folks who are quickly asking, I see in the comments, if you are a New Yorker, our primary is now June 23rd. You can call 311. They will transfer you to the Board of Elections. And you, re you could request an absentee ballot, fill it out at home, and put it in the mail so you don't have to go to a polling site. Um, if you are looking for something to also do during this quarantine, many of us are home. You should definitely get my book. Um, I wrote a book called We Are Not Here to Be Bystanders. It really speaks to this moment that Allah did not put us on this earth to be bystanders to injustice, to sit around um, and just watch all of these things happening around us. This is an opportunity for us to find the inspiration, to find the motivation, to do good, to, to organize, to continue to be with one another, to continue to build community uh, through this pandemic. So if you have not yet gotten my book, it's called We Are Not Here to Be Bystanders. You can order it from any, you know, you name it, Barnes & Noble. You can get it from a local independent bookstore, Amazon. You can just get it from whomever you want to get it from. And the last thing that I'll do is I actually want it. I, when I say and ask people to do something, I either am about to do it or I already did it. So while um, Sister Zahra was giving her presentation, I made a donation to ICNA. And I hope that you all join me today in doing that. ICNA needs you. The staff at ICNA need you. We need ICNA. And I um, have given whatever Allah has blessed me with, and I hope that you could do the same. And again, it's very simple for you to go online right now on Facebook, start a fundraiser, even if it's for $100. If you can't yourself give it, I'm sure that if we all came together as a community, we could ensure that ICNA is strong and that it, they emerge from this pandemic even stronger than they were before. So please support them. You can go to ICNA.org. It took me literally not even two minutes to uh, give my donation. Um, and again, thank you all. May Allah bless you all. May Allah protect us. And like I said, my DMs are open. One last thing is Empower Change, my organization. We are building a site for what we're calling a digital Ramadan, uh, we will be crowdsourcing lectures and crowdsourcing, um, uh, you know, information from around the, the, really from around the world, giving you uh, ideas and tasks and things to read and writing recipes and trying to keep our Muslim community together during the month of Ramadan. Just because we may not be able to be masajid together does not mean that we will not have a beautiful and fruitful and community filled and love filled Ramadan, inshallah. So please follow mpowerchange.org. We, when you sign up there, you will get the email about our uh, uh, digital Ramadan website where, where you can go find resources, find, uh, you know, just find community and being one another. We will be also hosting online iftars together so we can eat together, especially for folks who live alone, especially for our revert and convert sisters and brothers who often find uh, find community in the masajid and are, are not going to be able to do that this time around. We can still have these communal gatherings together. So thank you very much for having me. 
Thank you, um, I'm sure everyone benefited immensely from this session. Um, on behalf of ICNA and all of its divisions, including YM, we'd like to thank you all for participating and supporting this first ever online symposium. We have close to 2,000 families that joined us. We hope that this has been beneficial and we do thank the organizers behind the scenes who worked tires tireless to put together um, this uh, symposium with their wonderful teams, mashallah. Please be sure to keep all of them, all the organizers, the volunteers, and the speakers and their families in your du'as. I'm sure at the beginning of the symposium and possibly even now, most of you are worried, fearful, stressed, given the current state, um, worried about family, friends, co-workers, and our Muslim brothers and sisters around the subhanAllah. Some things are out of our control, but we have the ability to take this time of reflection and think about what we can do to change and improve ourselves and turn this hopelessness into an opportunity to apply the tips and advice we received from the scholars and the Muslim professionals you just heard from, especially to grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be as unified as possible uh, as an ummah, with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So throughout the symposium, I'm sure you have seen videos of Ikna Relief and Helping Hand and tips from our speakers on what we can do to help those, are the, those are, that are in most need. Please go to ikna.org slash donate, share some of the risks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each of us and share it with his organization that has many departments that are doing amazing work, mashallah. Um, and with that, the closing announcement, the ICNA convention team is still planning to hold a physical convention when the situation gets better later in the year. So please stay tuned for more details, inshallah. With that said, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, our families, and grant us strength and sabr during these trying times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant complete shifa to those that are sick and ill and shower us all with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the organizers and our wonderful speakers for sharing their knowledge and taking the time out to be with us these past two days. May Allah Panther increase all of us in knowledge and allow all of us to be steadfast in applying it and improving ourselves to spread the khair and to be outstanding Islamic members of our communities. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa la'asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina a'amil al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haqqi. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Please stay safe and healthy inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.